Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today is the day that I'm going over probably one of the most popular and requested kayak reviews in that sub $3,000 range. And of course, I'm talking about the Old Town Sportsman PDL series. Now today's video, I'm gonna be going over the Sportsman PDL 120. They do also sell a 106, a 10 and a half foot version. But for today's video, we will be going over the 120. And I'll also be referencing the 106 just for comparison sake. So how does the PDL 120 stack up to today's market? It's been around for a while. It was formerly kind of known as the Topwater Series. They made some updates and called it the Sportsman Series. But really little has been done since its release to kind of change it. So it's very, very popular. The pedal drive is a tried and true proven pedal drive system. How does it stack up to the competition? How stable is it? Should you buy it? Is it still a good value in today's market? And what does the future for the Old Town PDL system really look like? I'll go over my pros and cons here at the end of the video, so definitely stay tuned for that. Thank you for coming by. Let's get right into it. Okay, so talking about the Old Town Sportsman PDL 120, or the 12-foot version. Uh, again, they do sell it in a 10.5-foot version in the 106, but for today's video, again, we're going to be going over the 12-foot version. I'll probably reference the 10.5-foot version kind of periodically there, but just know a majority of the features I'm going to be going over are specifically for this 12 footer. So I'm gonna go over the boring stuff, the specs, the, 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 the numbers, all of that. So again, it's 12 foot long, just like the name kind of suggests. It's got a 500 pound weight capacity, but it's only got a usable weight capacity of 384 pounds. So the reason that's important is Old Town, to get their usable weight capacity, you do have to take off the weight of the kayak. I'm not a huge fan of that, but they are forthcoming in listing that on their website, as is Native and Bonafide and some other companies out there. But just know your usable weight capacity of 384 pounds is going to be what you're actually able to use. The weight, the total fully rigged weight of the kayak is 116 pounds. And again, it is a heavy kayak, as you could kind of notice from the looks of the kayak. So the Sportsman series really has that modular look, that bulky, blocky look to it. Uh, while it may not be winning any beauty contest, it is thick. So what you get with a thick kayak in addition, you know, other than just a heavy kayak, is you're gonna get very good stability. The hull design of this is really, really nice. So the two things that I really like is the hull design underneath the kayak. You can really see where that stability comes into play the ridging on the side, so you can definitely see the secondary stability on this kayak. And up top, you've got a nice flat deck space. Even with the pedal drive in the, you know, on the deck, you're not cluttered. You still have plenty of room to stand up on, to move around on a little bit if that's kind of your thing. And it's got a phenomenal seat. So a lot of people have been using seat spacers for the back of the seat. Me personally, I like a little bit of that lower position on the back end. It really gives that extra support to the backs of your legs and the little bit of a higher seating position makes it a lot easier for two things one standing up and sitting back down and two it really your your stair step for your pedal drive so you really don't want your knees too far over or at all over your hip angle that's going to put a lot of stress on your hips your tailbone you'll get that numb butt numb legs and toes you do have a little bit of that pedaling downhill and that will allow you to sit up straighter instead of laying back when you're pedal drive uh, you know when you're pedaling along that really kind of, you know, kayaks that do that, in my opinion, really take away the hands-free experience because nobody is going to fish when they're having to lay back to pedal the kayak and then move the seat up when they get to their spot. Some people like to fish while they're pedaling and you do get that a little bit with the Sportsman PDL 120 here. So moving into the front here, you'll notice at the very tip, they have it on the tip and the top of that tip is the drain plug. So that will do a lot of things for you. For one thing, it'll allow you to tip the kayak kind of up, allow that water to drain out. 
And another thing that you'll notice is the really, really nice, comfortable handle. So the front handles on this are really, really great. I'm a big fan of the hard plastic handle or even the molded handles. The biggest thing with this is your handles on your fishing kayaks, especially your heavier ones, the closer that handle is to the deck of that kayak, the easier it's going to be to carry. So the further away you get from that, or if you get those straps with the, uh, you know, the, the handles with the straps on it, it creates a little bit of that pendulum effect. It's going to swing it back and forth. It's going to make a heavy kayak feel heavier, if that makes sense. Moving even further back is the hatch. So you do get a hatch storage with this kayak. It's a little bit of that Tupperware lid with a little bit of that rubber gasket around it. I'm not gonna say that's waterproof by any means, but it will keep things dry. If you got anything like electronics or things that you absolutely don't wanna get any moisture on, always invest in a dry bag, but you have quite a bit of volume with the 120 inside that hatch. I'm definitely a big fan of that. Now the 106 version, you're gonna have a little bit smaller a hatch. That's really where you're gonna lose the volume between the 106 and the 120 is in the front hatch and the rear tank well. Now even moving forward back here is the star of the show the PDL drive. So the PDL drive, and I'm gonna go over a couple things that I noticed about this and it really jumped out to me dealing with other brands is the length of the pedals. So the PDL drive has a little bit of a shorter pedal length. What that does is that makes it your, your, your angle, your circulation, it makes it a tighter circle, a smaller circle. So those of us with longer legs, we're not doing that really big sweeping motion there. And those of us with shorter legs aren't tippy-toeing with, you know, when we get to the very end of that pedal circle. This allows you to more comfortably, it's, you know, you're not gonna have your legs swinging out to the side or your knees hitting you in the chest. I really like this. That may or may not have been their intention with the shorter pedals, but it's some of the other brands out there that have the longer pedals. It makes for a very, very uncomfortable pedal. Uh, there is a sweet spot, obviously, with the height or the inseam with some of those. But with the PDL, I feel like it's a broader, you know, a, a broader spectrum of leg lengths and you know, taller paddlers, shorter paddlers, big and tall, short and small type thing. I really like that and I'm really looking forward to getting this out on the water and kind of testing that because again, I am a longer inseam and the longer pedals really are uncomfortable to me personally. I'm a huge fan of that setup on this. Um, another thing that's kind of unique to the PDL system is you do have a little uh, kind of console hatch system built into it. Uh, this is a great place to keep your tournament tags, to keep smaller items. And the great thing about the pedal drive system is it floats. That is extremely unique. So one thing you get with the little bit, kind of a weatherproof uh, hatch in there is that's volume, that's air. Uh, there's videos out there of people dropping them in the water and watching them float. When I take this out on the water, that is definitely something that I will try out and show you guys. But just know if you dump it over for some crazy reason that the pedal drive comes out that's a really expensive upgrade to make is buying a new pedal drive I don't care what system that you're running you don't really have to worry about it on this I do like the handle on the front of it so that'll make it easy to carry it'll also make it easy to tether your pedal drive to your kayak so if you're in some water you're in some choppy surf again if you tip over that's the last thing you want to do is lose your propulsion and have to replace that pedal drive warranty will not cover that so anyways guys so Really nice feature, uh, again, on the Old Town kayaks is the seat. So it's a snag-free, mesh, breathable setup here. Uh, really, really comfortable, especially for us bigger anglers and some shorter anglers as well. It's wide, it's comfy, it's adjustable for the tension on it so you can make it as tight or as loose as you want to. You know, let it sag down a little bit or let it straight. Put on your kayak cushion there as most of us do anyway. But I really like the seat set up on these. Um, another thing that's unique is the seat system. You have quite a bit of an adjustment of the seat going forward and backward. Now, obviously the PDL system being a fixed position, it's for shorter and taller paddlers, but you have a substantial amount of increase and decrease in forward and backward. It's got the little locking knob system, which is really, really nice. I'm not sure how that would handle and after years and years of lake water and gunk and stuff in there. Some of those may stick a little bit, but I really like the setup. It's simple, it's easy to use, and it gives you quite a bit of that adjustment. 
Another really unique feature is the compartment right behind the seat. Now this is going to be for those of you that have smaller batteries for your fish finders, uh, your lighting systems. You know, if you're, if you're into the yak power setups, this is going to be where that goes into. It gives you just an additional in-hatch storage and also it gives you access inside the hole as well for those of you that like to tinker with things and to customize as well. Another thing that doesn't get talked about enough, in my opinion, is your forward-facing rod holder. So you do have the forward-facing rod holder. It is going to be on your left side, so keep that in mind for you lefties out there. But it allows you to change that lure out really nicely. It allows you to boat the fish or if you got a net, it allows you to put that pole somewhere where you're not having to fool around with taking a hook out of a fish or you know, untangling your hook from your net. And it keeps your rod from going into the drink, falling over the side. It's just, it's one of those really, really well thought out features. Again, might've been something that they thought of just kind of in passing, but that is one, that is really one hinge that swings a big door with me personally. Two flush mount rod holders in the back. That's pretty much the industry standard. Uh, they do kind of kick it out at an angle to the sides. So keep that in mind as well if you get into some really tight spaces. They do kick out to the side instead of straight back. And really one of the biggest things on this is that huge tank well. That tank well is going to hold your 16 by 16 black packs or smaller. It's going to be able to store your battery with that compartment. There's a tremendous amount of volume for a fishing kayak, a pedal drive fishing kayak in this, uh, in this price range here. Another thing that I love about this kayak is the flip down rudder. I think that is something that I would really like to see in more kayaks. A lot of your kayaks in this price point is going to have your fixed position rudder uh, that's going to swing back and forth. This one, you got the lever on your right side. So again, for you lefties out there, keep that in mind. On your right side, it's a lever that goes forward and backward for up and down. So if you're hauling in the truck, it keeps you from having to really pay too much attention to your rudder, uh, you know, having it up against the back of the truck. You're gonna to need to look at it a little bit, obviously, but storing it on its, you know, on the bottom, you're not gonna to have to worry about squashing that, uh, that rudder down any or having to remove it. I also like that they use stainless steel wire. That's gonna be really durable as where most of this kayak, it's built like a tank, so you're not really gonna to have to worry about a whole lot over time. And the hull design. So underneath, you can see here the deck, uh, the deck of the kayak being flat, but underneath the hull, you can see where you get that stability. You can definitely see where you get your secondary stability on those ridges on the edge. This is gonna allow you to lean over to get that fish out of the water and not have to worry so much about tipping over. You're gonna feel that resistance in that secondary stability. Again, when I get this out on the water, I'll definitely kind of take, uh, take that to the test and kind of talk a little bit more about that. So let's talk about warranty. So warranty is one of those things that I feel like gets really confusing with a lot of people. So uh, Old Town does claim a, li a limited lifetime warranty on the hull. The hull is the bottom, the plastic part of your boat, and it's, it's meant to be protected from factory defects and defective workmanship. So it doesn't mean that your normal wear and tear is gonna be covered. It doesn't mean that your abuse, so again, if you're, ma if you're doing it or using it in a way that is not intended, there are some fine prints on that. And that's with everybody, so I'm not picking on Old Town by any means, but a lot of people just like to throw out, oh, it's a lifetime warranty, you never have to worry about it. Well, that's true to an extent, but if you're using it for commercial reasons, you know, if you're an outfitter or a rental, it's not gonna cover you on that. And then also, if you're, you know, if you do some modifications to it and some damage happens from those modifications, you're also, possibly going to be left out in the cold from the warranty covering it, which again, pretty much every company out there is doing the same thing. Native and Bonafide also does the lifetime, the limited lifetime hull warranty for the same thing. Same thing on the drive. The drive system has a five year warranty on it. Again, I don't really worry too much about the drive system faltering because I like simple designs on drives. You get a little overcomplicated with things. There's more things to break. There's more things to tear down. But with the pedal drive, I, was, I really liked how, how solid it feels in the hand. And the one thing I will say, the prop did seem a little small in comparison to other 
you know, other brands. I'm very curious to see what the speed test on this will be, and we'll definitely kind of take that out as we get it out on the water here. Okay, so let's go over some pros and cons. So first and foremost, there is a ton to like about this kayak. There's a lot to love about this kayak. There are some things that I really, really enjoyed, and there's some things that surprised me a little bit, some things I'd never really heard anyone talk about that I really, really liked. So I'm gonna go over those here, and also go over some things maybe that you may wanna consider when looking at this kayak against some of the other kayaks on the market. So namely, let's start with the pros. First pro is this kayak, it, the number one question I get asked is, is it stable? Well, this kayak is gonna be no joke as far as on the water, but looking at the hull design, I could really anticipate this being a little bit speedier than it looks. But as far as stability, you're not gonna to have to worry about any stability. But one thing that I definitely wanna caution people on when looking at a fishing kayak, you want something stable and you want something you can stand up on, but you can go a little too far into the stability realm. With this one here, I definitely see some lean with it. I definitely see some secondary stability points. I'm really looking forward to kind of seeing how that handles on the water and does it translate to a better speed. Uh, I talked about a little bit about the smaller prop. I'm kind of wondering wondering if a little bit more energy is required to move that, but we'll see on that. So stability, definitely, you're going to have a stable platform here. Okay, so pro number two, you're dealing with a US company. So you, if you've watched the videos that I've done in the past on other kayak brands and manufacturers, you know I'm a huge, huge fan of roto-molded kayaks, one-piece construction, and US made. Old Town's been doing it forever. They're made in Old Town, Maine. A lot of people know the story of that, but it is what it is, guys. A majority of the parts and the products you're gonna get from them are made in the US. That's a big deal to me. It's a big deal to a lot of people out there, and it should be a big deal to you too because that's the quality of the product. There's a much easier control of the quality control process when it's all in the States, as opposed to when it's overseas and you're just getting the finished product. A lot of those companies don't know the quality and the quality control process. A lot of these US companies actually go through these kayaks and measure the thickness at different points of the kayak. So keep that in mind as well. And pro number three is the seat. So the seat is what you would expect or not really what you expect, but what you want out of a fishing kayak at this price point. You want a comfortable seat. The one thing I will say about the seat is the fact that it has the underseat storage built into the kayak. That is moi. That is amazing. So I, we sell products. A lot of companies will sell products that it's, it adds underseat storage. Those can range anywhere from 100 to almost $200 you get that with the kayak. So again, that is a value. That is something that you're getting already for the money that you're paying. And honestly, it's just one of those things where you don't think you're gonna need it until you use it. It does come with a little tackle box. Uh, again, tackle box seems to be decent, uh, decent quality, but it's stored in there so you can definitely see the value of having that under seat storage in addition to the room under the seat as well. So again, kudos to that. Definitely uh, definitely something really nice to add to this great kayak. Um, another thing that I didn't really talk to um, about in the bow to stern walkthrough is the rudder control. Now you don't have the ambidextrous rudder control, so you lefties need to kind of think about that a little bit is the controls for the rudder are gonna be on your left side, but it does have a little rudder screw. So what that is, that is a, you can, keep that rudder locked into a position. This kind of turns your rudder into a skeg. I'm a big fan of skegs on kayaks. You've seen them in the Bonafide RVR 119. You get it similar on this. You can turn your rudder into a skeg. So if you're in there on big, big open water and you're not really worried about turning it left and right or you just don't want to mess with that, you can tighten that screw down. It holds that really nicely and you can just pedal, pedal straight. Uh, I really like that because it's super, super easy. You're gonna be able to do that on the fly a lot better. And again, that's just one of those things that I think about just from past experience on other kayaks. And finally is the rudder. The rudder is huge. So the rudder, the fact that it flips down, that's gonna give you a lot more control on your kayak. And the fact that it's mounted on the very, very back and not in the hull, that is going to give you a lot more distance 
to travel. So you're going to get a lot more of a right to left turn. That's going to give you a tighter turning radius. I would really expect that to be even tighter on the 106, the shorter version. So I really like that because again, it's a large, heavy kayak, but it handles a lot more like a smaller kayak with small features like those. And again, I'm just a big fan of. The durability of the parts also with the stainless steel cabling and just the hull is, reminds me a lot of Native. Uh, it's very thick, it's very durable. Um, it just feels like you could drop it off a building and then just throw it in the water and not see any moisture get in there. Okay, so let's go over some of the cons. And again, I'm nitpicking a little bit, but it, this may be a bigger deal to some of you versus others, but just some things to consider is all. So uh, con number one that I would talk about is really anything when you're talking about a fishing kayak that's made like this, it's heavy. So it is a heavy kayak uh, compared to say a Bite FD or a lot of other, you know, say the Native, the Titan X 10.5s, all that. It, they're full of heavy kayaks. This one is no exception with the weight of the kayak and the fact that the weight does kind of cut into your usable weight capacity. Those are all things to consider. But with weight capacities, I'm not gonna tell you not to worry about them, but just know that a lot of companies do very similar weight capacities or they do some different ratings. Don't let that be the number one thing that steers you away from a brand. I'm not saying buy this, I'm not saying not to buy it, but don't do it just based off the weight capacity. If you have the ability to demo these kayaks, please do so. Just think about what you're wanting to carry with you. So again, heavy kayak, that's gonna take some consideration on how you're gonna transport it, how you're gonna get it to and from the water. Are you gonna need a kayak cart? Are you gonna need a trailer? So things to think about with a heavy kayak. A lot of people see the kayak, they're beautiful, they've got all the features on them, they buy them and they're not really thinking about transporting them. And a lot of them get that buyer's remorse when they're talking about, guys, it's just, it's so hard to move it to and from the truck or the trailer and they just end up not wanting to use it anymore. So keep that in mind on there. Uh, con number two is going to be, again, if you're, for you lefties out there, having the controls on that left side can be an issue. Is it something you get used to? Of course, but we've all done that. Our, you know, us righties, we get a, a left-handed reel and it just, it kind of throws off our whole game there. So you got your rudder control on the left side, you have your rudder up down on the right side and your forward facing rod holder is going to be again on that left side. So just keep that in mind as well. Con number three, and really again, this is really nitpicking. Um, the front hatch, the bungee cabling that goes over the top of that, that is really asking in my opinion for a hook to get snagged into it. Again, not a huge deal and it's definitely not unique in the kayak space having a lot of bungee in the front but just know if you're using your crankbaits if you especially if you like to lay your rods down on the deck pointing forward just know that if you get something stuck in that bungee you're going to have a little bit of a fight and a little bit of a situation there um, just knowing that can definitely help you avoid that but just like the handles with the fabric straps Bungee on the front is definitely always something that I always am cautious about. So just know that. Other than that, this is a really well-made kayak. It's popular for a reason. In my opinion, it still holds true to the market today. When you're talking about, I would compare this to the Jackson Byte FD, but the, you know, with the Jackson drives, the new Mark IV drives, it's about the same price as this. The Sportsman PDL 120 is a bit longer than the Jackson Byte, so you get a little bit more of a storage area. You get the hatch storage with this, but the Jackson drives do kick up. So those of you that are wanting to fish some skinny water, maybe take it on some different creeks and rivers, fish some different terrain, you may want to think about that as well as the PDL does not really truly kick up so just know that deep water lakes not going to be a big deal to you at all um, but this one is going to compete directly with again the Jackson Bite FD um, it's going to be in the same space as say the Slayer Max or the Propel 10 footer again there's a lot of different different kayaks in that space. And in my opinion, when you get around that $2,500 to $3,000 range, that's when you start to see a mixture of kayaks with less features and kayaks that are overloaded with features because you're getting a little closer to that upper tier. Uh, but anyways, guys, 
Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this helped maybe inform you on some things with the Old Town Sportsman that maybe you haven't seen before. And if you have any additional questions, let me know down in the comments below. As always, support your local paddle shop. They're there for a reason. They're there to serve you. And with warranties and service, that is going to be your main point of contact. So definitely, if you have a paddle shop within even an hour or two away or closer, definitely support them. Give them a chance before going online or buying from those big box stores. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you on the next one, guys.